If you're eating a hamburger or a hot dog, you may want to watch this review a little later because I'm going to talk to you today about the truly disturbing Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Bastarica. So let's go ahead and uh, tuck in. I was definitely excited to get to finally read this. I believe this book showed up in one of my very first judging books by their covers videos. And I was instantly intrigued by the cover and the concept. What I found the book to be is more complicated. I have some pretty complicated thoughts about it in a way that I've never really experienced with the book before. As a concept, I think this book is fantastic. And it's a pretty kind of straightforward concept. This book takes place in the near future where animals are permanently off the menu because they have become diseased. And if you've been following any of the E. coli and listeria outbreaks and things, it, it feels kind of creepily possible that that part of this book could happen. Now, not everyone became vegetarians. Rather, people were um, creative as humans can be in good and bad ways. And basically said, you know what, soy and green, do you remember soy and green? Silent green is people! That was maybe not a terrible idea, but the way that this is accomplished in this book is truly horrific. And a lot of that horror is accomplished simply by treating humans as we treat animals today in our meat processing. And if anyone has ever seen a video from a large industrialized slaughterhouse, you get a sense of what you get in this book. And all of those scenes are incredibly disturbing. But what I really like that Basterica does here is she goes beyond that. Because really the book does deal with this concept of how we as humans are especially horrifically good at sort of papering over things, at sanitizing it. We're very good at packaging something in a way that's consumable. And that sort of thing is chilling. And much of this book, which is only about 200 pages, really kind of relies on, I don't wanna say the shock factor, but the horror intrinsic with treating humans in that way. In a way that kind of becomes a little repetitive, but it becomes very clear through the course of the book that because we have dehumanized people in this way, we actually are seeing humans as meat, that other kinds of dehumanization are to follow. And you see that in multiple ways in this book. It doesn't just stop at meat. So you might be hearing all that and say, wow, that sounds fantastic. It sounds like you really like this book. There's a lot of interesting ideas going on. And when we're talking about those elements, I really did enjoy this book on those terms. Like I thought it was very interesting. I thought the way it mined horror, while a little repetitive at times, was interesting. The problem with I have with this book, and it's a big one, is I really struggle to read it. Not because of the content, although the content is a lot and certainly taken all the content warnings. It was more the style of the writing. I just was completely unengaged by it. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're just told a lot. Rather than sitting us down in the middle of this world and letting us discover it and, and kind of facing the horrors as we come to it, Bastarica instead basically has the main character just sort of info dump on us for chapters and chapters. The world isn't so much illuminated for us as there's just a bright spotlight on it right from the beginning. And I think that's very intentional. But for me, it made it kind of a uninvolving read, which is a weird thing to say because there is so much in here that is very disturbing and extreme in some ways, but it's kind of flat in its prose and its character work, at least for me. There's just a lot of telling a lot of telling. And I think your enjoyment of this book will depend on how much you like that approach. It does mean that Bastarica is able to cover a lot of ground in this world that she's created, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but then it kind of just feels like a travelogue of horrors, <laughs> essentially. In between, we have these sort of scenes of the main character and what he's dealing with. He has a wife that's absent. He has a child that passed away that he's dealing with, the grief of that still badly. But for me, it did get a tiny bit repetitive because it's kind of just the one note that's hit for a while until there is a major development that I don't want to spoil that is horrific in all kinds of ways that leads to the truly chilling climax of this book, which I adored. I just wish that there had been more around it to support it. 
the ideas that are present here and what it's saying, I think are, are really important. And I think that we have seen this in all kinds of ways, the sort of degradation of humanity. And one of the things that this book does really well is it sort of hints on the edges. You know, it doesn't really ever state it directly. It's one of the things it doesn't state directly. But you do get the sense that, yes, you know, we've been doing this for a long time. Like, this is a large-scale, extreme version of it. But the dehumanizing of people has been an ongoing concern for a very long time and led to some of the biggest atrocities in our history. So I'm in kind of a weird place where I almost admire what this book is trying to do more than I actually liked the book. 